أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد وشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد Tonight, uh, today on the 6th of Ramadan in the year 1441 corresponding to the 29th of April in the year 2020 we are in the book Al-Wajiz the concise presentation of the fiqh on page 431, Al-Ila, Al making an oath to abstain from one's wife. If a person swears that he will not have intercourse with his wife for a specific period, which must be less than four months, then it is best for him to simply break that, to expiate for that oath, and to have intercourse with his wife. The Prophet wasallam said, if a person swears an oath, then and then he and then finds that something is better than what he swore to, then he should do that better thing and expiate for his oath. Okay. I have asked for our recited to go back to the ila to add to our ila because somebody had asked me regarding the issue the last time which is to do with the story of when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said Ya ayyuhal nabi lima tuharrimu ma ahalla allahu lak abtari marbata azwajik this ayah which was mentioned um, it is actually has a link with the ila for the ila the ayah which is directly mentioned to it or linked to it is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said in Surah Al-Baqarah إِلَّذِينَ يُؤْلُونَ مِنْ نِسَائِهِمْ تَرَبُّصُ أَرْضَعَةَ أَشْهُرٍ فَإِنْ فَاءُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ وَإِنْ عَزَمُ الطَّلَاقَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ This is the ayah 226-227 which is talks about that the people who makes ila from their wives to wait for four months. If they go back, that means they go back to the intercourse and Allah Azza wa is the oft merciful for forgiving. But if they have decided to go for the talaq, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Sami'un Alim. He's the all hearing, the all knowledgeable. So the ila is basically is like an oath the husband does in order to maybe punish his wife or punish his wives if he's got more than one. And it happened the time of the Prophet. He had um, there's a story of the Prophet of Allah that he had basically wanted to punish his wives. And he made ila from them, meaning an oath not to approach them for one month. And the story regarding why he did that, it, it differs. Because one of the stories mentions that because of the honey story, which is that is when the Prophet ﷺ, he was drinking honey you know, with one of his wives called Zainab. And somehow uh, Aisha, she said to Hafsa, as soon as he comes in, um, Let's just say that he had, you know, smelt with garlic, um, just to, you know, uh, somehow that the, the, the honey that you have drank in, in Zainab house gave you this garlic smell. And another narration as well, it was actually Aisha, she was talking to Sauda and to Safiya against Hafsa. The story is mentioned in one Sahih Bukhari that the Prophet uh, uh, was having his day with the Hafsa and uh, he got a bit delayed there. Aisha, she was so jealous. So she said to Zauda, as soon as he comes in, you tell him, Zauda, that he smells garlic. And then when he says, what, what is this? He would say to him that this, uh, he would say to him, maybe he drank honey. Because she knew that he's got, he had uh, Hafsa, she had honey from somebody else. And that's why the Prophet of Allah used to love sweets. He used to love sweets and honey, all of that. And that's why he stayed a bit longer with Hafsa. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said to Sauda, sorry, Aisha says to Sauda, make sure that you tell him that, yeah, you, you know, you smell garlic. And he will ask you, well, I drank honey. You'll tell him, well, maybe the honey, the bees went to the garlic. And that's why uh, the honey came out with a smell. And then you have such, uh, sorry, you, Sophia, you told him the same thing regarding that, so that he will not go to Hafsa and stay with her longer. But because of all of this, and also, it's another story that Hafsa, she had disclosed the secret that the Prophet gave her to Aisha uh, 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 as well. And also, there's another story which talks about that the Prophet وسلم, he had intercourse with his uh, a slave, and that is uh, uh, the mother of Ibrahim, Maria al 
And one of his wife, she said, Messenger of Allah in my house or on my bed, you've done that. So because of all of this, Prophet wanted to punish the wives by uh, 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 by by keeping himself away intercourse wise for a month. And uh, when he came down from his mashraba, which is his, his room, which was his inn, isolating himself into, into it, away from the wives, when he came down to, to the wives, Aisha and other wives, he said, you said a month and it's 29 days. So the Prophet suddenly said, well, the month is sometimes 29 days and sometimes it's 30 days. So when I've done a month, 29 days is, 29 days is a month. So the person, when he makes an oath for that sake, it is not haram. It's it, haram if it's got no justice. So it is one of the disciplining of the wife as well. So this is Prophet Sallam, he had made an ilahi, made an oath not to approach his wife, sexual wise, intercourse wise. So now you have up to four months, and that's allowed. And she's not entitled to ask for a divorce. And that's when I said the last time, Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he asked his daughter when he sent the army to Ajnad, he said to her, how long the women usually would be patient uh, regarding her husband away from them. So she said four months. So he commanded for the army to come back every four months in order to uh, satisfy their desires. So the four months here, that is why it's linked as well. The ayah is linked, well, they're, they're linking to the ayah. Four months. So if now it's the month, the, the four months had reached. Now the scholars had differed regarding I mean, if he stayed longer, is he divorced? Is that divorce counted a divorce? And that's one opinion, which is not the stronger opinion. The stronger opinion is that she's entitled now to ask him, either you have an intercourse or divorce me. And she could raise her matter to the judge and the judge will ask him to intercourse with her or if he doesn't want to do so, he will pass divorce. Okay, he will overrule. Because if the wife, she said to him, okay, divorce me, and let's ask him for khulr. He did not give her the divorce, which is the khulr. And she could raise the matter as well to the judge. And the judge will force him to either you into cause or you have to divorce. If he didn't accept the divorce, he will make the divorce. He will make the pass the divorce on behalf of the husband uh, onto the wife. Uh, so if the person had made ila for a certain time, uh, then is it better for him to uh, go ahead and fulfill it? It depends. But it, it, we say always that ila is something which say that it is uh, mahbub. It is right, like you should not really approach it unless it is needed. And it is better for you to break your oath, okay? If you, there is no justice here, to break your oath and um, the expiation, which is the breaking of the oath, is either uh, one, which is one or two. From one, if you can't do one, you go to two. Number one is either you're a free slave or you feed 10 people, 10 poor people, or you clothe 10 poor people. If you can't do one of these, you've got a choice of this, then you go to the second one, because you're not financially capable, is that to basically uh, uh, fast three days, whether continuous or not continuous, uh, it doesn't matter. Right, so, uh, <clears throat> now we're coming back to the, uh, as well, the ila, just to make sure that you understood everything in it. Right. Now, if this person had, as I said, violated his oath, he had approached his wife before he completed the, the, the term, then he has to, as I said, to make the kafar. Right. I believe I finished everything for the uh, ila. Now, and then you could go now to the heart. If a man says to his wife, you are like, you are to me like my mother's back, then he has committed a vihar. Can you slowly, slowly, okay? And I ask you, did you mute, unmute yourself or somebody else unmuted you? I unmuted myself. Okay, unmute yourself and wait because half of the word vihar is gone. Take it easy, you're not really in a rush, go ahead. A vihar. If a man says to his wife, you are to me like my mother's back, then he has committed a vihar and his wife becomes forbidden for him. He cannot have intercourse with her or enjoy her in any fashion until he expiates in a manner described by Allah in his book. 
and those who make unlawful to their to them their wives by every harb, and wish to free themselves from that which they ha they have uttered. The penalty in that case is the freeing of a slave before they touch each other. That is an admonition to you, so that you may not return to such an ill thing. And Allah is all aware of what you do. And he find and he who find and he who finds not the money for freeing a slave must fast two two successive months before they can both touch each other. And for him who is unable to do so, he should feed sixty poor. That is in order that you may have perfect faith in Allah and His Messenger. These are the limits set by Allah, and for disbelievers, there is a painful torment. <laughs> which is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about that woman she came to the Prophet وسلم, to complain about her husband who made lihar from her I'm going to explain what is lihar and Aisha radiallahu anha wa ardaha she was next to the Prophet and to the woman yet she is not really making up what the woman is saying to the Prophet of Allah because he was so low voice yet Allah the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala from above seven heaven had you know sent a verse regarding this saying that Qad sami Allah, Allah Azul had heard the complaint of that woman who is complaining to you, O Messenger of Allah, regarding her husband. And that's when Aisha, she said, glorified to be to Allah Azza wa Jal, whom his hearing had accommodated for everything. He could hear everything. I mean, she can't hear him, hear her, because she was saying it like in a whispering mode to the Prophet. Yet Allah Azza wa Jal, from above seven heaven, had heard the woman, uh, uh, she was complaining about her husband to the Prophet Al-Dihar Al-Dihar from the word Dahr Dahr means the back the back, Dahr is the back it was a, a Jahiliya practice that the man if he's, he wants to punish his wife he would say Anti dahri ummi. you are like the back of my mother the back is the thing that you write so it is like the intercourse is writing so if you are making now the wife it's like the back of your mother. You can't write your mother, of course, because she's haram. But when you make a wife like this, it's called vihar. Okay? So al vihar is different from the ila. Ila is a, an oath by Allah Azza wa By Allah, I'm not going to approach you. You are upon me haram. Khalas. But this is different. This is like, you are like the back of my mother. The other one, we said, sometimes it is permissible, and sometimes it is advisable, but sometimes it's not good. But the bihar is always no good. Okay? You should not be saying these things, okay? Your wife, you are like the back of my mother. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had described. Verily really they're saying something which is deniable, something which is not acceptable. Okay? Zura, he said. Zur is falsehood. Munka and Zur is being described. So the Jahiliya the time they used to consider as lihar is talaq divorce and that's why this actually lihar and uh, al ila they should be in the chapter of talaq okay because from the talaq not from the marriage because we're going to have talaq later on so the, the, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made it for this ummah that the lihar is not talaq at the time of the jali it was talaq means divorce but this one is not divorce and the, he Allah he made in it a kafara an expiation but a heavy penalty expiation. It's not like the oath, which is like you free a slave, if you're having got a slave, and you could just no, it's even a choice. It's not if you're having a slave. It's a choice between freeing a slave or feeding ten poor people or clothing ten poor people. Even if you haven't got that, then you could go on past three days. This one is not it's a heavy penalty, as we're gonna see. So the basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he had made a kafara, did not make it a talaq, um, as the jahiliya people used to do it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in uh, also in the verse, which is Surah Al-Mujadid, number two, الَّذِينَ يُظَاهِرُونَ مِنْكُمْ مِنْ نِسَائِهِمْ مَا هُنَّ أُمَّهَاتِهِمْ إِنْ أُمَّهَاتُهُمُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَدْنَهُمْ Really, those are the ones who make them behalf of the women. That is, they are not their mothers. How can they make them like the back of their mothers? Or well, the mothers are the ones who are giving birth to them. وَإِنَّهُمْ لَيَقُرُونَ مُنْكَرَ مِنَ الْقَوْلِ وَزُورَ Really, they're saying words which are from the deniable words. They are the evil words. They are for the falsehood words. Now we have a story here, which we would like to, we would like to ourselves to recite it, which is Khuwayla bin Tumalik bin Ibn Thalaba. Khuwayla, she is the one 
when she said my husband, Aus ibn Salit, had made a zihar from me. That means he said to me, like you are like the back of my mother. That led to the Prophet ﷺ complaining about it. And the Prophet ﷺ is basically uh, uh, talking to me regarding my husband. He said to me, uh, come on, you know, you fear Allah regarding his you see your husband. She was like, she's saying that she's saying to the Prophet, okay, that he's divorced me. I want to divorce him. You should fear Allah Azza wa Jal. He is the father of your children. He is and he is. Okay. Allah is your, is your cousin and he's your cousin as well. Fear Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, I have, until I finish, uh, you know, while he was talking to me, I'm talking to him. Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, but Allahu Allah had heard the saying of that woman who complained regarding her husband. Now, until the end of the verse. So the Prophet, because of that verse, he said, okay, which is the verse that our reciter had just recited. Okay, he would set a slave free. So she said, Messenger Allah, he doesn't have any slaves. Then he said, okay, he will fast two months consecutively. He said, Messenger of Allah, he's an old man, can't be fasting, can't fast. So he said, okay, they let him feed 60 poor people. So she said, Messenger of Allah, he hasn't got anything that he would give sadaqah with. He cannot feed 60 poor people. He's poor himself. So he said, okay, right, um, wait. Probably the Prophet ﷺ, he's being brought some sadaqah from other people, which was a araq. Araq is like a, a basket made of the haystack. They make it along that time, okay? So made of some bamboo, maybe, or something like wooden things. It's like a basket, and it's full of dates. Normally, the quantity is about 15 sa. Each sa, two and a half kilos. If you multiply two and a half kilos by 15, you end up with about 40, 45 kilos. So it was brought up with 45 kilos of dates, okay? So the Prophet, sallallahu so he said, okay, uh, basically, you give that to him to give sadaqah. So she said, Messenger of Allah, then I will also help him with another basket. So the wife is helping her husband as well. I will give him as well another from me. She said to her, Well done, somebody would. So he said, Verily, go with these two baskets. We've got now 30 sar, which is a lot, it's about 70, 70 kilos, something. They give this, okay, uh, to 64 people. Give that to 60 poor people and then go back to your cousin, I mean, as a wife to your husband. Right, so this is one of the stories which is regarding uh, the al -Bihar. We have another story as well, which is Urwa uh, ibn Zubayr, radiallahu an. He said, Aisha, she said, Tabarakalladhi wasi'a sam'uhu kulla shay. Blessed be, uh, exalted be uh, Allah, the one whom his hearing had encompassed Encompassed everything. So, verily, I was listening to the words of Khawla, been to Sawal Ta'laba, and she, some of her words are audible, and some of her words are not audible to me. And she was complaining about her husband to the Prophet, and she was saying, Messenger of Allah, what he did, he had actually wasted my youth, and I had given my belly, my womb, to be as a land for him to, uh, to uh, harvest and to plow. That means for intercourse and for as well for making babies. And when I got old and I can't produce any children, he had made the heart for me. So once I have, you know, like a, when the machine is knackered, you, you know, you throw it. It's like when I got old, okay, and I, I can't really produce any more children, she passed the age. Now, the moment he just made the heart for me. Already, I, 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 I'm complaining to you, O Messenger of Allah, so I said, regarding him. So I was complaining until Jibreel sent the verses that we have heard. Right. Now, so we say the one who made a, a muzihar from his wife, okay, is either he made it for a particular period or he made it for permanently. If he made it for a particular period, then we say to him, okay, make kafara and then approach your wife. And if he did not make, he did approach his wife before he made the kafara, then we say to him, make the kafara, and it's not going to be double kafara, the same kafara. But if he had made it forever, you are like the back of my mother, 
he did not give a specific time, then he has to make a kafara. He has to make a kafara because he has to break his oath, his bihar. And in both cases, we say that he's done something bad. You should not be saying that word. The vihar, the vihar is just for the mother. So if you are just said like, you are like my, my, my sister, or you are like my daughter, or you are if it's your wife, this is nothing the same. Or you're like the back of my sister. No, only the mother. And also it is the back. So he said, you are like my, the hand of my mother. You are like the face of my mother. And no, it's not the heart. The heart is like the back of my mother. But of course, there's a difference among the scholars, but I'm giving you the cream of the crop regarding this issue. Now we have a story as well, which is a different one regarding a Bihar, which is for a specific time. The first one, which is Khawla bintu Thalaba, it was for unlimited time. This one for a limited time, which is the month of Ramadan. This is from Salama, okay, or Suleiman, his name. Salama or Suleiman. Ibn Sakhr al Biyadi, radiallahu anhu. He said, I was a man. Can you see that story, uh, Ismail? Yes. Okay, read from that, please. Salama ibn Sakhar al Bayawi said, I was a man who had great desire of women, such that I did not, such that I do not think anyone did so more than I. Thus, when Ramadan came, I made I made Vihar to abstain from my wife until the month finished. When she was speaking to me one night, part of her body, part of her body became uncovered in front of me and I ended up having intercourse with her. In the morning, I informed my people as to what had occurred. I said to them, ask the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa about it. They said, we are not about to do that as Allah may reveal a portion of the book about us or the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may say something about us and we would remain deprived due to it. But go you with your sin and mention your case to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I went to him and informed him of what had happened. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked, You actually did that? I said, I actually did that. And here I am waiting for the ruling of Allah concerning me. He then said, Then free a slave. I said, By the one who sent you with the truth, I have no wealth except for this servant of mine. He then said, Then fast two consecutive months. I said, O oh, Messenger of mine. You said, except for the servant of mine? Yes. Okay, okay. But there's a bit of lots of mistakes here in translation. Go ahead, I'll finish it. I'll translate it better. He then said, fast, then fast two consecutive months. I said, O Messenger of Allah, it is from nothing but the fast that I am facing this trial. He said, give charity to or feed 60 poor. He said, I said, by the one who sent you with the truth, we spent this night without even having a dinner. He then said, go to the charity collector of the tribe of Zuraiq and tell them to give, you to give you the charity and feed 60 poor with it and use what remains for yourself. The point here is that the Prophet wasallam did, did not object to him making a wihar. What he objected to was his touching his wife before his expiration. Few mistakes here in the translation, and I would say that all for the brothers and the sisters learn Arabic. Otherwise, you're going to be looking at the hadith that doesn't make sense to you because some of the words it doesn't make sense in the hadith because actually it's been translated wrongly. Salam ibn Sakhr al or Sulaiman, both his correct names. He says that I used to be a man who has got desires for the women, and I used to, he says here, it means I used to intercourse even with my wife more than anybody else would intercourse with his wife. So he's got the desire for the women and also when he's with his wife, he likes to do the marital intercourse with her more than anybody else. Okay, so when the month of Ramadan had entered, okay, so he said, I was afraid that I will be intercoursing with my wife until the Fajr would start and still I am doing it. As I said, because he says that he, 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 he had, uh, had so much desires to his wife um, and he would intercourse continuously. Because of that, uh, out of fear that he will violate the fast, that means 
the night is not enough for him. So the day is not allowed to intercourse. During the night, he's allowed. So he might be, another hadith says that I could be intercoursing and I will not pull out before the Fajr, which is I'm not allowed to intercourse after that. I have to pull out. Because of this, I said, well, the best thing for me is to keep, keep away completely from my wife from the whole month because I don't want to be intercoursing. But actually, he made it worse unto himself. He said, Anti ummi. He didn't say it because he's saying something haram. He didn't know. He said, you are like the back of my mother for the whole of the month of Ramadan. They so made a per period of time, which is the month of Ramadan. It's not making it like you want to divorce her. No, no. He wants to make sure that he will not approach her because she's, you are like the back of my mother. And that would make him sort of away from her. And he will fast the month of Ramadan without having the agonization, the trouble when he's intercoursing that he's going to be doing all, all night until his Fajr is going to come and he's still doing it. And then he would be paying the heavy penalty. The heavy penalty here uh, of breaking the fast of, uh, 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 of Ramadan by intercoursing, okay, it's actually the same heavy penalty they're going to end up with when you make Bihar and you break the Bihar. It's exactly the same. So if you have intercourse in the day of Ramadan when your fasting is obligatory upon you and obligatory upon your wife as well, so both of you, they have done something which is wrong. And that is you have a kafara, which is the same kafara expiation as we're going to see in a minute, inshallah. Five. So here we find Salama, he said, you are like the back of my mother for the whole of the month. So he says that I was with her one night and she was serving me. Something uncovered from her body, whatever it is. And he's got the desires. And that is during the night, not during the day. Where he's allowed to touch her, but because you are like the back of my mother, he's not allowed to touch her. As I said, as I said before, he made it even worse for himself. So he said, Nazautu alayha. Nazautu alayha, that means I, the, the translation was not the correct. I jumped onto her. That means because he's been away from her, I jumped onto her and I made the intercourse. He couldn't really wait. Now, when he had done that, now he realized that what a mistake he's done. Because he had said to his wife, you are like the back of my, wife, uh, back of my mother uh, uh, for, the, for the whole of the month of Ramadan. So straight away, he went to his people to help him. And he told them what happened. And he said, please, can you come with me to the Prophet ﷺ? He said, no, by Allah, we will not go with you. And the reason behind this, they said, well, for verily, there might be some revelation going to come, and it will be because of you. And the translation in your book, it says, um, the, uh, something is my remind me what you said in the book, that it says that uh, what these people said, we are not about to do that as Allah may reveal a portion of the book about us or the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam may say something about us and we would remain deprived due to it. Deprived, that's the word. No, actually not deprived, defamed. Not deprived, defamed. It's like a scandal. You know, everybody say, oh, this verse because of you guys, it's your guy, one of your family, he's the one who had made intercourse with his wife and all of that. So, why don't you mean? The whole family is going to be a reputation tarnished because of you. You go on your own. We're not going to be. You're going to go on your own. We're not going to go on your own. You're going on your own. So he went to the Prophet. And the Prophet has been told, Hunter, you are the one who done it, O Salama? He said, Yes, I am, Messenger. Yes, I am. Twice he said it. And I am patient regarding what Allah is going to rule regarding this issue. So, uh, uh, the Prophet so he said, So it looks like the, the verse has been revealed already regarding that woman who came with her husband. Regarding the woman who had said to her hus uh, that her husband made the har from me. The ayah has been revealed. So he said, okay, Harir Raqaba. Harir Raqaba means free slave. So he said, by the one who sent you with the truth, I know got no Raqaba except, which I own, except, and then he struck his neck. It was not translated like this. He struck his neck like this. Except this Raqaba. Raqaba means slave you own, and Raqaba means a neck. <laughs> He's a neck as well. 
except so as well the translation there yes Ma'ili translated like he said I, I I only know another slave or something like this isn't it yes yeah I own another if he owns another slave he could have just freed it he doesn't own anybody he only owns himself so he is the slave of himself basic just a sense of humor here and he just the only messenger of Allah I own myself that's it but the Prophet he said fast two months consecutively so Prophet of Allah he said verily well what had happened to me is actually due to the fast so if you're gonna do that it's gonna be the same thing I mean, I'm not gonna be able to keep myself away from my wife I'm gonna fast consecutively I'm going to be able to come to court during the night, but not able to pull out, you know, before the following day. So he's saying that basically, Messenger of Allah, that's not a solution. That's going to increase my problem. Two months is too much for me. So he said, okay, feed 64 people by a whisk. Whisk is 60 sa. The whisk is 60 sa from dates. Whisk, which is 60 sa, is about 120 kilos. So he said, Messenger of Allah, very late, me and my wife, we slept with no food. I mean, I don't have any to give to the poor people. We don't have any food. So the Prophet said, okay, go to the Sadaqah of the tribe of Banu Zuraiq and let them give it to you in order to take that Sadaqah and feed 64 people. And also from those 64 people, you as well, eat and your children from it because he's poor. Now, Banu Zuraiq is his own tribe. So Salama, he went there to his tribe and he said, you know, when I went to you and I come to you and I talk to you and I sought your help, I really found harshness. You didn't even give me nothing. Uh, and I went to the Prophet Wasallam, and I found, mashallah, everything's nice and accommodating and he is helpful so much. And by the way, he commanded me to command you, give, you, give me your sadaqah. And also the Prophet ﷺ commanded me to command you to give me your sadaqah. Okay, me, give me your sadaqah. Here. Yeah. So he took the sadaqah as well, gave 64 people amongst them himself and his wife and his children. Now, this expiation is only the same for another thing, which is a person violating his fast by intercourse while he's fasting on a day of Ramadan. Not expiating a day of Ramadan. So let's say you have a day that you have messed up because you're traveling and then you are making up a day, uh, a different day to make up for that day of Ramadan and you have intercourse with your wife, okay, listen, then basically the kafara is not valid there. There's no kafara upon you. Yes, you'll be sinned for breaking that day by intercoursing, but it is actually this is a, a violation of in Ramadan, it has to be the month of Ramadan. Number two, that fasting is compulsory upon you. That means you're not a traveler, you're not ill. Because you're a traveler, you're allowed to uh, intercourse your wife, you're allowed to, okay? So you're not a traveler. You're, so you have got, you're a, fasting is compulsory upon you. It's not, you have an excuse to break your fast. That's number two, okay? Uh, and number three is that the person who is uh, intercoursing is intercoursing with his own will, okay? So intercourse with his own will. Number four, it has to be during the day of Ramadan. And intercourse means, you know, the penetration. It has to be the penetration. If this person had done this, then the same kafara will take place. This is a man came to the Prophet ﷺ, and I want to narrate that story in order to distinguish between the story of Salama or Sulaiman ibn Sakhr al and the story of this man who came to the Prophet ﷺ. He said, Messenger of Allah, halakt, or Nadraj ahlakt. I have gone or I have destroyed through somebody else. And that's from the narration. I've destroyed, I lacked. That means he had, as well, he had done it to his wife. Okay, I lacked. What have you done? Well, I approached my wife with intercourse during the day of Ramadan. I said, okay, be a slave, messenger of Allah. I got no slave. Okay, fast 60 days. He said, messenger of Allah, I cannot fast 60 days because he was not able to control himself for one month. How can you fast? Two consecutive months. He said, okay, feed 64 people. So he said, very messenger of Allah, between the two lavas of Medina, lavas, labatain, Medina is well known between lava, lava, lava. Between the two lavas, uh, the whole Medina, there's nobody poorer than me. He made an oath. 
Now in Medina, it's got lots of people and it's got poor people. But he said, I buy Allah between the lovers, I mean, in the whole Medina, there's nobody poorer than me. I don't think he was working with the socials to know which one is poor or not. But he made an oath according to what he believes is authentic. He made an oath of what he thinks that this is almost correct. And that's why we say when you make an oath, which is you're almost correct, no problem, no violation. So for example, somebody's coming and he's got a ticket from Pakistan to England. And somebody's asking, is he coming? Is he coming? By Allah, said, well, by Allah is coming. Because you have made an oath, because you know it for a fact that he had a ticket, he's coming today. But somehow the plane was delayed, he canceled the flight, or whatever. He did not come on that particular time. No violation of you. You did not violate your oath. Okay? Because you have made an oath upon what it is uh, uh, almost certainly to be correct. Fine. So this is the same, I said kafara, of this person who had made the hal. So the only, so remember that if somebody asks you, what is the similar kafara to the lihar, is the kafara of a person who makes an intercourse in the month of Ramadan, during the day of Ramadan, penetration-wise, and fasting is compulsory upon him with his own will. I'm, I'm saying with his own will, because you know for a fact, if the wife, if the woman, if she was forced by her husband to make the intercourse, there's no kafara on her. Our Sheikh al Albani, rahimahullah, said there's no kafara on the woman. But our Sheikh al says, rahimahullah, it depends. If the woman, for example, that she had, uh, 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 she has, she's the one who had actually, you know, wanted him to do that. She had done something to pull him to do the intercourse, and she's involved as well. And the kafar on her. You might ask her, well, why didn't Prophet Allah ask him to go and tell his wife to do the same thing as him, which is the kafar? Well, simple, because Prophet Allah, he gave the answer of somebody who's making if that. If she has to come and do the same thing, he would give her the same thing. So he gave the answer to the husband because he asked. But he doesn't know the circumstances of the wife. The wife, she has to come and ask. But if the wife, she was not willing, and the husband forced her, there's nothing on to her. Okay? Right. So this is the only similar kafara like her. There is people, they think, that there's a kafara of the person who kills, not uh, deliberately, the same kafara. No. The one who kills not deliberately, the kafara is different. So for example, you were driving in a car, and somebody had, you know, somehow you got drifted and killed somebody. That's we call it not deliberate death or killing. The kafara for that is to free a slave, if you can't, and fast two months, but there is no such thing to feed 60 poor people. By this, alhamdulillah, we have said the bihar, and we have actually established the fact that if you have made a bihar for a limited period, uh, then you have to make the kafara. If you have made it for a limited period, then we say to you, if you did not approach the wife during that, that uh, time that you said, then it's no problem. But if you approached her, okay, then you have to do the kafara. In both cases, you should not be making the har from your wife. By this, alhamdulillah, we came to the end of what we had. Uh, can you just read the last bit? Hukmu, the rule of it, Ya Ismail, Jazakallah khaira. The ruling of Al-Wihar. Wihar is forbidden as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described it as a false and evil statement and has condemned the one who commits it. Okay. Allah okay. says. Okay. I've just said that verse before. So anyway, we said the Wihar has to be with the mother and the back of the mother. It is not with the auntie. You are like my auntie. You are like my sister. That's not Wihar. It has to be with the back. If you are like, like the finger of my mother. No. It has to be the back. Because the verse is clear. يُظَاهِرُونَ مِنْ نِسَائِهِمْ Okay? يُظَاهِرُونَ مِنْ نِسَائِهِمْ خلص المضاحرة is clear والله تعالى عن But if he said You are like my mother or the back of my mother and he meant to honor her no way hard. Some people say Wallahi, mashallah, you are my wife You are just like my mother as dear as my mother You are like my mother And he meant did not mean as my mother not to approach her sexual wise no, that means he is back to me. He is honoring her and saying that you are so close to me, just like my mother is close to me. So no problem, uh, inshallah, and it's not the hard. Next two weeks time, we'll be talking about divorce. You might as well tell uh, the brothers and 
course, more important than the sisters, very important to know about the divorce. So many people they ask us about the divorce. So we want to equip them, inshallah, with some information that they will understand where their ground is. Because if you understand what is the divorce, then you will, inshallah, make sure that you'll avoid it. And if you fall into it, then you will follow the proper procedure. Now, uh, I will go to Ahmed. Please go ahead and tell the brothers about the questions. Right, my brothers and sisters, if you have a question for the Sheikh, what you need to do is bottom right corner, there's three dots. If you go there, you can raise your hand. Once you raise your hand, we'll unmute you and you can ask your question. Priority will be going to Ellsbury, inshallah, because the class was originally for them. And uh, in terms of priority wise, if the sisters could type their question on the chat, they have priority there, but they can use the microphone if they wish to do so. And brothers, please help us by using the microphone. It makes our job easier. First person from Ellsbury I can see is, uh, nobody from Ellsbury is asking question at the moment, but uh, we have Faisal Ibrahim first in the queue, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Sheikh, this is a question on Salah. Is this okay? Let us just be on the priority, okay? Sorry, Sheikh, your voice is very quiet at the moment. Faisal, can you just, uh, would, I'll just mute you while the Sheikh talks. I said, inshallah, let the priority goes to, inshallah, the question regarding the subject, the topic. And please, Ahmed, next time as well. Priority goes for the topic questions. Leave this for the last 10 minutes, inshallah. We've got until, inshallah, 15 past. Fadr. Any question regarding Bihar or regarding marriage and divorce? Yalla, Ahmed. Second in the queue. Nobody's listening to me? Okay, Asif, go ahead. Fadr, yeah. Asif. Brother. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. I have a, uh, my question will be coming in, uh, in the last 10 minutes. Okay, sorry. All right. Anybody about, please, can I just take the hands off all the way? All the hands off. Take them out. Yeah. Right. Okay, now, please only uh, uh, raise your hand now if you have a question on topic and you're from Ellsbury, they'll have priority. If not from Ellsbury, but it has to be on topic, please. Okay, Abdullah, go ahead, please. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Rabbi Ahfadak. والله إن شاء الله ربي يطول في عمرك السؤال هو يعني إذا كانت uh, if they wife English English okay sorry is if the wife push the husband for the intercourse I mean you say the sheikh I mean the husband when he went to Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم he told him the kafara for himself only but if the wife she push the husband for the intercourse does it, the kafara goes for the only wife not the husband or is it for both of them? If you could just clarify, thank you. Mark Law, picture. I don't think even the non Muslim would go along with you. We call it uh, husband rape. I mean, I know that the wife rape, but not husband to be raped. Okay? There's no such thing that the husband being pushed. No, it's not acceptable by any scholars. That's why the Prophet did not say to him, Were you pushed by your wife? Okay? So it is always. The wife, she's the one to be pushed because the man is stronger than her. Uh, I don't think there's a man will be. He just refuse the man. Okay, she, the woman will not be raping the man. Always the man raping the woman. Okay, so I'm saying raping as in rape, as in, of course it's intercourse, but we don't say that. Uh, we say that the woman, if she was the one who was involved and was with her own willing to go ahead with the intercourse, she has to go with the kafar. Now, Zakalakhir for that question. Mohammed Suhay, please go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. Sheikh, uh, forgive me for my uh, ignorance and lack of understanding uh, as I'm new to seeking knowledge. I, I just wanted to know about the Bihar. Um, why would somebody take uh, this oath or promise to not touch their wives? And uh, what, what is it for? Uh, uh, please, um, um, sorry, Sheikh, if I come across confused. Are you married? Uh, yes, Sheikh. And you never had any row with your wife? Yes, Sheikh. Uh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that's it is. Somehow, people, they have a row. Either, for example, they shout, they yell. Some of the people out go further than that. They might 
slap him, I'll give him a punch. Alhamdulillah. Some of them, they, I would say, I'm not going to approach you, and he leaves the house. Okay? So it's one of, one of the part of these things. So one person would say, you just like the back of my mother, and I'm not going to touch you. If he said that, he had said something which is evil. Okay? You could say, I'm not going to touch you, but you say like that, I'm evil. You could say, I, by Allah, I'm not going to touch you. That's, that's allowed. By Allah, I'm not going to touch you. But we say that if she's good and all right, then it's better for you uh, to go and expiate your oath. But the oath is different from the Bihar. Bihar is heavy penalty. Be a slave if you can't for 60 days. If you can't feed 60 poor people. And by the way, you can't run away from the slay, uh, the fasting of the two months. Well, I'm just like that man. If you are old, yes. But not, for example, just like that. Oh, well, I, I just, I can't fast. Let me go to the uh, better one, which has got money now to go and feed 60 poor people by giving them food. No. If you are able to fast for 60 days, you have to fast for 60 days. But in terms of the oath is different from what we have, Allah Ta'ala. Jazakallah khairan. Abid. Oh, what a funny. I'll leave it to you. Yeah, ah Ahmed. Salaam alaikum, Sheikh. Salaam to Allah. If, uh, if, uh, if a husband divorces his wife twice and, uh, and she's back with him, the third time, if she is coming the khulu' from her, if she if she done the khulu' from her, can they get back again? Okay, the khula is not counted from the divorce. You could make khula 20,000 times, 50,000 times if you want. But khula means that the wife is asking the man to divorce her. That's khula. The wife is asking and taftadi nafsa. She will ransom herself. So I'll give you some money, I'll give you part of the dowry, please give me divorce. That's the khula. But I'm, I'm afraid in your question there, there is maybe somehow this person is trying to twist the law to go from a different direction. So for example, he divorced her twice, and then he knows if he divorced her the third time, he's not gonna go back to him until she marries somebody else, a full marriage. And if that other husband, he would divorce her or he dies, then she could go back to her first husband. But because he's scared of doing that divorce, he will say to her, you ask me for it. If you give it, you will becoming khula. That's not allowed. It has to be with the willingness of the wife to ask for the divorce, not to make a hmm, contact or a, some sort of a deal between them. You know, because they know that the khula, that's the difference between the khula and the divorce. The divorce is well, one, two, three, but the khula is unlimited. Khula is unlimited. And the khula difference as well, the divorce, when you divorce, it's rajah, meaning it's revocable. She, she stays for three months or three months in your house. Or if she's pregnant until she delivers her baby. And she's still your wife. She's still in the house. You can't kick her out. But for the sake of the khula, khula she's straight away. As soon as khula takes place, both of them are strangers. She stays for a month. Okay? Uh, and that is the month, just a, it's not a cooling off period. It's a month for the sake of, that if she wants to get married to somebody else, she's not pregnant. That's all. She's not having been pregnancy from the husband. As soon as that khula takes place, they are separate straight away. They have to live in different houses. Now. Sheikh, can we take a question from the sisters? Yes, please. Okay, one question from the sisters. Assalamu alaikum. If husband and wife separated without divorce for several years, then they do nikah and come back together again, but then again separate, as they understand they cannot... Ahmed, say that again, please. I'm, I'm... Okay. If husband and wife separated without a divorce for several years, then they did another nikah and came back together again but then again separated as they understand they cannot get on well because of husband isn't religious, but wife is so. Several years now, they have separated for, for years. Are they still married or are they divorced? I understand the word separated. Separated what? They separate is like divorce or separate like they live differently? Separated if they could just clarify for us, please, the question and we'll come back to it. Yeah, um, I'm just now, at the moment, while you're asking me the sister's question, I could see the sisters, they can't really ask on the microphone because they're shy. Okay, inshallah, tomorrow uh, we'll arrange. Uh, there's a sister as well. She is on my emailing list and she's brother Kelsey. She's on a man. If she's there, please, we're going to arrange a sister class only for sisters. For well, this sister's question, tomorrow, bi'idhnillah, on Al Khamis. No man is allowed, only the women. And they will ask their questions because the Prophet of Allah is being approached by one of the wives of the companions. And they said, Messenger of Allah, specify a day for us. 
they want to come and ask their questions where there's no men there. So tomorrow, inshallah, is for you, Allah, at the same time as seven o'clock, I will announce it, Allah. Men is not allowed. Okay, it has to be a woman. Fine. Sultan um, Muhammad. Oh, sorry, no. Sheikh. I didn't mean okay. to cut you off. Sultan no. Muhammad, please go ahead. Okay, then we'll go to Abid, inshallah. Please go ahead, Abid. Did you unmute him, by the way, Sultan Muhammad? Did you unmute yes, him? Sheikh. But sometimes they have to give permission before they get unmuted. They have to what? They have to give permission sometimes so that uh, they can unmute themselves. It doesn't happen instantly. Okay, I could unmute them. So I could unmute them, unmute them myself. Are you sure? Sultan Muhammad, I'm, you are unmuted now. Oh, he's not giving me permission. That's true. Okay, like, let's now go to um, the questions uh, of everybody. We've got six minutes. Go ahead. Go ahead, Abid. Abid, now, um, just regarding the Khula Sheikh. I've come across a hadith, the Prophet, so a woman came to the Prophet ﷺ, uh, asking for khula, and she said her husband's fine, she, there's nothing wrong with her husband, she just doesn't like his appearance. And the Prophet ﷺ granted the khula. So does this imply um, that um, the khula is quite easy to, to get? Uh, and by the way, I haven't really uh, gone to the khula, because the khula is coming in the divorce chapter, inshallah. But the khula is not really easy. Easy as in, she had said a reason that is not resolvable. Can't resolve that reason. I hate him. I don't like his looks. She had said that she's good in manners. Mashallah, as a sheikh. Like Bintil Jawn, when she came to the Prophet of Allah, and he wanted to intercourse, she said, A'udhu billahi minka, I seek refuge in Allah from you. I'm the Prophet. So go ahead. I don't see divorced. So this woman, she said, I don't really say anything regarding his deen, his mashallah, but I don't like him. It's like, I hate his guts. I don't like him. I, I cannot really manage. And she said in the narration, Inni akrahu al-kufra fi Islam. I hate this belief in Islam. Ya kufr, kufr al-ashir means to be uh, not on his obedience. Because if I don't like him, I might be sort of hesitant in, uh, uh, for example, serving him and obeying his commands. That's why she's scared from that. So I told him, are you going to send him, give him back the orchard that he gave you? It's like a, a garden. He gave you as a dowry? She said, yes. So the, he said to the husband, accept it and give her a divorce. Talliq. So he gave her a divorce, which is a khula. Right? It's not easy. No, it's not easy. For some he said, al muhtaliatun al munafiqat. The ones who seek khula for no reason, they are munafiqat. They are hypocrites. So somebody asked seeking khula, well, because he hit me once. Subhanallah, that's khula. Oh, he did not bring me, you know, meat today. He brought me chicken. What is this? Khul has to be a justified reason. And the, 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 if it's a justified reason, which is resolvable, uh, like the Prophet is telling him, fear Allah is your cousin, and you know, he was asking because he made the har, he made an oath. No problem, you make a, 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 you know, sort of an oath between them. But she said, I don't like him. How can I, how can I resolve this? I'm going to go tell the husband, brother, go and make, put makeup on you. Can't change himself. I don't like him. So that's the end of the story. Prophet Salaam Khalas, he did not really argue with him. Okay. She said, I don't like him. It's not to do with, he did not give me enough food. Or not. In that resolve, Abu said, give her food, give her clothes, give her, but this one is not. No. Sultan Muhammad, who was in the queue, he's typed this question. Can you ask Sheikh about shaving the beard because of new NHS policy for wearing masks for COVID-19 protection? Refer to my fatwa, which I've given on that. I've sent it on the emailing list, and I said for, you, for, for, for a number of times, Yaqwani, you know, the person who is uh, after any reason just to shave his beard, he doesn't might need my fatwa. Kalas. If he's just for the brink of just having any reason to go and shave his beard, but the person who regards his beard is part of the deen, of Salam commanded it, and it is a major sin if you def shave it. Okay, without any legitimate reason. What is a legitimate reason? That means death. That's a legitimate reason. Death. On the stake, at stake. So we say that this person who says that there is a COVID-19, I'm in the front line, I'm a doctor and all of that. Yeah, there's plenty of alternatives. Plenty. Alternative one, which is that, that 
FFP3, which you know with the hood. That will do it. Even if you're long beard, you'll do it. If you haven't got it, option number two, make your own, yeah. You make your own. Bring your jilbab from your wife. Okay, your abaya. You could make your own. Don't go to the shaman. Uh, option number three, I've got this mask, but it's not really fitting. I need to trim a bit. Yeah, that's the option number, after the option one, two, can't work, two, three. Trim it. Why won't they shave it? SubhanAllah. I have seen even worse than this. Somebody sent me a video. People in the hospital, doctors in the hospital, they're making jama'ah together. Wallahi. With a full mask, uh, FFP3 and everything, PP, maybe FFP5, yeah, this is something I've never seen, like spaceship. Uh, together, these are the doctors. And they are saying, They make rukur. Because they're scared the ground is contaminated. They don't go to the ground. Say, the sujood is rukur. Well, I've got a video clip. I've got to believe it. But to what extent are they going to be making this? And what is this? So instead of making sujood, they make a rukur. You can bring a piece of sheet. Clean it up and make sujood on it. But don't invent in this prayer and make you know, somebody look at the haram, they're having space between them. Yeah, where is the proof? Haram is not a proof. These are people. They're doing it. Where is the proof? Isn't it a number of times we said that the haram makes something like from the bid'ah? That is the imam saying Allahu Akbar. And there is somebody saying Allahu Akbar. Bid'ah number one is that he's making a musical Allahu Akbar. Bid'ah number two. He is making tabligh, that is, conveying the words of the imam, where it's not needed. Why it's not needed? Because, as I said a number of times, the imam speaks on a microphone. The microphone is connected to a wire. A wire is connected to the machine. And it's called the amplifier. The amplifier is connected to speakers. So he said, Allahu Akbar. And the person who's repeating his words, Allahu Akbar, he speaks on another microphone, who's on another wire, that goes into the same machine, which is the amplifier, that goes into the same speaker. So what is the point of repeating the words of Allahu Akbar? Apart from this is a habit will never finish. You've seen the Haram prayer, the first day and second day, third day, the people behind the Imam, mashallah, they got together. Jamaah. Fourth the fifth day, I said, I've seen people behind the Imam. Space. So there's somebody bringing this. Look, 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 look. What is this? A proof? Allah, was it Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praying? Kibbani is praying? Who is the proof, ya khwani? So, I mean, this is endless, ya khwani. It's endless. You can't really copy anybody. Prophet Allah did not say, oh, people copy people. But no such thing. So we have a proof. Look for the proof, inshallah. Right. Now let's open the question and answers, please, for everybody. Sheikh, there's some classy uh, questions on the chat from uh, yeah. Divorce. Okay, so the first question from the chat is, if a person in, in ignorance before, they didn't use to fast Ramadan, and uh, they found out they have to fast and they made tawbah, do they have to make up these fasts? They don't have to make any of that fast. Just repent to Allah as well, start from now. And don't listen to any of these people who tell you, oh, you have to count how many years since you were an adult. So I would say from your 15, so if you are 25 now, that's 10 years, multiply that by 30, 300 days, this man's going to be put off. If you're going to tell him fast three, 300 days before he starts in 30 days, he's going to be put off. Forget about it. So, no, at said, Al Islam Islam, he will remove all the sins before you. Alhamdulillah, you start with 30 days, Ramadan with proper repentance, that you will not do that again. Alas, everything, inshallah, an increase in voluntary fast. So, after Ramadan, do, for example, al ithnain do al khamis or do, uh, for example, three days in a month. If you do these things, the Prophet of Allah said, these voluntary will compensate for the missed obligatory. But to do something that you haven't done before, what's the proof? Okay. The man who prayed in the masjid of the Prophet, he prayed quick rukur, quick sujood. He finished the prayer, went to the Prophet, Salaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salaam, go back, you haven't prayed. They went to the prayer. Quick rukur, quick sujood. Came to the Prophet, Salaamu Alaikum, Salaam, salam, go back, you haven't prayed. Three times. After the third time, he's a messenger of Allah. I don't know nothing except for this to teach me. What does that mean? I don't know nothing except for this. That means all my life when I was praying, I prayed like this. So the Prophet, salam, he said to him, okay, when you do the prayer, and he told him, but he never said to him, okay, since you were having the puberty, you have to repeat all those prayers because you don't know nothing except for this. He never said that to him. One day, I made a couple of reverts, and 
They came to my country, Jordan, then. They passed through Turkey, and they passed through Sufi people. And those Sufi people, they already had told them things which are not correct. So when they met me, they picked me the Asr. And after the Asr, I saw him doing another prayer. And I thought he's doing Sunnah, which is okay. There's Sunnah after Asr, but he's doing four Raka. And then he started another four Raka. I said, what are you doing? He said, well, our Sheikh. I said, who's she Sheikh? He said, such and such in Turkey. Yeah. He's telling me because I have, you know, I just now became Muslim. Now that since I was, uh, you know, 15 years old, my prayer has to be prayed. So I'm praying my Asr plus my Asr. So could they make up for those? And he prays Maghrib plus a Maghrib, sometimes two Maghrib as well with it. Isha plus two Isha. I said, SubhanAllah. So he's got a pen of paper and recording how much prayer and how many prayers he should be praying since he was 15 years old. I said, you got to send to me? Stop all of that. Nothing on you. Pray your prayer. That's it. Asr. And increase in the volume. Pray nawafil. Sunnah. There is the Hayat al-Masjid, there is Sunnah al-Wudu, there is Sunnah al-Duha, there is all that prayer. It will compensate, inshallah. Now. I pray Allah blesses you and the Sheikh with mercy. I have two questions. The first, can a person undertake blood transfusions whilst fasting? Uh, even he praised me and praised you, Jazakallah khairan, Jazakallah khairan. It does not give him the go ahead to go and ask you a question. But lock the second for the first. Maybe are the same? The same questions? No, Sheikh. It's about braided hair. Okay. So the first question is what? If he's having a blood transfusion, can he fast? Blood transfusion. Blood transfusion, that means you're going to transfer blood to another blood. Go to the person. We're taking blood from... No problem. You could take blood transfusion, but be aware that maybe you could get a collapse. So be careful. If you have to do it, do it. If you don't have to do it, don't do it while you are fasting. No problem. Blood transfusion does not break your fast. Second question, quickly. Yep. Second question is, can a person, if his hair does not flow, it doesn't move when I move my head, but it is long enough to braid it. Is it permissible to pray with these braids in? And the microphone doesn't work. That's why they asked. Uh, yeah, I'll ask this man to sh cut his hair. Why should he have it long? And to bother him that much. If he doesn't want to, then he cannot have it braided or tied up. Okay, he has to be loose. Um, as we said, for the women, is no problem. But for the men, it has to be loose because it prostrates with you now. Expiation for breaking an oath. How many people need to be fed? We said 10 people for clothed 10 poor people. Now, Sheikh, should we take the two American questions because we ran out of time or do you want? Yes. Okay, Asif, go ahead. No, it's Fazl. Fazl first. He goes first. His hand was first. Before. Fazl, go ahead. Sorry, Asif. Jazakallahu khairan, Sheikh. I appreciate that. Sheikh, real quick, when praying our Sunnah prayer, um, while play, praying on the floor. Can you show us how to do a proper ruku? And also, where do the hands go after ruku? On our laps or on our sides? And do we sit if the rosh, iqa, tawarruk, or cross-legged while praying sitting? That's making a prayer, Faisal. <laughs> 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 do the whole prayer. So when you make a ruku, are you saying to me, what's the question? So, so when you're making ruku while sitting, can you show us the proper way to make a ruku while praying your sunnah prayer while sitting? So what, what, uh, okay, so you are sitting like this. I'm sitting on the chair. Is we sitting on the chair? Yes. How can I make a ruku? So the ruku is like this. So I am now in the fatiha. Allahu Akbar. As for the ruku, after the fatiha, the surah. And then my hands is on my knees, not on the chair. On my knees, and that's the ruku. And and do we sit? Do we sit? Um, iftaraj, tawarruk, or what? Which way, Sheikh? I'm on the chair. You mean sitting on the ground? No, no, no. On the ground. I'm sorry. On the ground, Sheikh. Yes. Uh, on the ground. <laughs> on the ground. Always, always do the things which are in the sunnah. So that you, you, you the, the, the 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 best way, which is iftaraj, and do it tawarruk. You can't do it. So it's, uh, the, the best way is uh, closer to the sunnah. So the Prophet also said, then you could be doing like, you know, if Taraj, you know what's that, Taraj? Let me show it to you. So if you are sitting with the Rukur, I don't know him. So I am sitting here like that. That's it, Taraj. 
So my fatiha and then my rukur, okay, my sujood. Okay. If I can't do that, I could do like this and sit and make the rukur. Whatever is comfortable for me, I could make like this. Or I could make like this. And I make rukur, okay? Right. Can I make like this? Yes, you can. If you are unable to sit down like this, you can make sit down like this as well, which is cross-legged. Because you're not comfortable. You can do like this. If you're not, especially if it's a big long recitation. Now. Barakallahu Sheikh. This is what I want you to answer. Thank you so much. And I think Asr from New York has a question also. Session here. Yes, brother. Um, okay. America this is, is helping America, 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 Sheikh. They're supporting each other. <laughs> this is racism. Probably America. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. After the congregational prayer, the Imam does he turn and face the congregation directly, or to the right, or the left, or all three? Uh, the sunnah, or is one preferable? And also, does he sit in like in the position of jalsa or cross-legged? So the Imam is finished. Okay. He's touching the people now. Sorry, going to the Qibla. Yes. Are we finished? Yes. Yeah. Go to the people. He's saying, is it like this? Or is it like this? Or is it like this? And how, how does he sit down? Does he sit down like that? Or does he sit down like this? Or does he sit down like this? So what are you saying? Yes. Uh, first of all, you're going to find this controversial among the scholars. But the correct opinion the difference between and Sarihu, because the hadith he said sometimes he would go from his left, sometimes he would, that's going out. That means he would leave and he would go from his right. Uh. Or he would go from his left side. But it doesn't all, it means that he would turn from this way, or he would turn that way. Okay? But it doesn't mm -hmm. seem that way. He used to face the people. So the sitting mm -hmm. is to be completely facing the people. Mm -hmm. Now you sit after the prayer, it's up to you. You sit like this. You could be sitting like whatever you want. You could be comfortable like that. Sitting on top of it. But normally this is the case if you are able to do it the shahwat position. It's the same thing. But there's no uh, basically uh, sunnah to do it after the prayer. How? But to face the people. So when you, I for myself, when I, I do like this because I'm more comfortable like that. So I, I look at the people like this. So I'm facing the people, not like this. Okay, with my side. I mean, these people are not going to be comfortable with me. Or like this. Well, these people are not going to be comfortable with me. Okay? So the, the, that's why the, the hadith is not being read in the proper manner. Because this one is to do with how you turn and how you go. It's not to do how will you sit, but it's the people of Allah Ta'ala. And as I said, it's controversial. Now, Sheikh Ali from Ellsbury is asking, if a person makes an oath and then he dies without fulfilling that oath, can someone else fulfill their oath on their behalf? A very good question here. Nobody can fulfill his oath on his behalf. Only uh, the person who had vowed, and he made a vow, then we would say his closest relative, he would fulfill that vow. It's like saying, by Allah, I'm going to fast such and such. By Allah, I'm going to... Okay, that's a vow. It will be fasted and no problem. But just an oath, there's no fulfillment of the oath because the guy is gone. He wanted to fulfill his oath. Why should I make up for him? Because he died. Um, same thing here as well. If somebody died and he had a loan, okay, am I permissible for me to go and pay my zakat to this person's uh, 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 for example, loan after his death? No. You should not be paying loan to somebody, okay, who is dead. You, you, be, you give the loan to some, on behalf of somebody who's alive, okay? So when the person dies, as soon as he dies, the priority goes, first money from his money goes to the debt. Whether it's the death of Allah, which is like, uh, for example, this is the feeding for 60 people because he had an, uh, uh, a violation of Ramadan or he had an oath to break so that he will violate so he'll expiate his, that's from his money, it goes to that, to uh, feed the 10 poor people. That's the oath, see? 
but don't fulfill it. But I will expect from his money, I will feed ton, ten poor people. Um, so that's from his money. If that is the case, then if he, if he hasn't got his money, then his relatives will pay his, on his behalf, but not from the zakah. I cannot pay from my zakah onto his, okay, into his debt. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Sheikh al Taymiyyah, he said, unless there is nobody to pay, okay, and there's nobody to settle the debt, then you could pay from your zakah to the debt. And that's controversial, as I said. So we don't want to open this gate. We would open this gate. The inheritors would say, oh, we don't have money. You know, the guy, he did not leave money. So now, because he left alone, everybody will start because, because you know, you, your sympathy always goes with the dead. Always goes with the dead, the dead person. Because of that, these people, the heirs will run away, turn off from that, and they will start, you know, having paid to, you know, settle the debt of their father who died, whom they're supposed to have. First money goes from his father's money, is from their father's money, is to go to settle the debt. They want to run off by making the other people pay from this account, Allah Ta'ala Alam. And we have the last question. If a person has a vessel in his hand and the adhan goes, he is able to finish his food. However, is it okay if the person regularly eats five minutes before the adhan and he knows he can continue to eat? Or is it better to try and finish before the adhan goes off? It is better to try off all the time to finish before the adhan. You're not deliberate. Like somebody else asking me, you know, this person is always have the, holding the cup in his hand. If the adhan is triggered, he still could drink. This is for something which is, it happens that you started your food, okay? And the Prophet would finish his meal, and he sometimes he would not because Allah will give him the food. Companions will have the meal, okay, until it is stopped. They will stop. Abdullah ibn Umar used to have two servants. One would look at this side, and he see the Fajr keeps eating. If he see the Fajr, he stops. He stops. So you keep eating until the Fajr, but not to deliberately all the time. They want to finish after the Fajr, okay? That's not a good habit. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Subhanahu just, just a question from the co-host, if possible. Just one from me. Because it's the time, Sheikh, for the adhan, ya Zahid. I'm sorry, but... Okay, next time, Inshallah. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.